Hi everyone, greetings from Denmark. We are from the Multisensory Experience Laboratory at Aalborg University, Copenhagen. We would like to present our paper, Revisiting Audiovisual Rotation Gains for Redirected Walking. When immersed in a virtual environment with head-mounted display-based virtual reality, visual feedback is true to the virtual world, while the vestibular and proprioceptive systems are true to the physical world. And this can cause inconsistencies between the sensory systems, with vision tending to dominate the other two, influencing the perceived body position and movement the most. However, if these inconsistencies are small enough, they are unnoticed by humans. And this can be exploited to allow users to travel great virtual distances within a limited physical space by redirecting them to unnoticeably take a different physical path than their virtual path. And this is what we call redirected walking. When compared to other locomotion techniques, redirected walking can be advantageous as it builds upon natural walking, reportedly increasing feelings of presence, improving spatial knowledge and reducing cyber sickness in virtual environments. While there are other techniques available for redirected walking, this study focuses on rotation gains, which is a subtle, continuous reorientation technique. A rotation gain scales the user's rotation, either increasing or decreasing the amount of virtual rotation in respect to physical rotation, and detection thresholds indicate whether the applied gains are noticeable to users. Prior research have estimated detection thresholds of rotation gains, however, research on the influence audition might have in this regard is scarce. And therefore, this study estimates detection thresholds for audiovisual rotation gains in a virtual environment with a rich soundscape and varying degrees of visual information. And this is to potentially reveal any influence audition might have. So we performed a within subject study with six conditions. Three conditions for each degree of visibility, so low, medium and high density FARC, with audio and without audio. To determine if detection thresholds varied across different conditions, we adopted the method of constant stimuli in a two alternative force choice task. So specifically, participants had to perform a series of rotations on the spot. Each trial started by showing an arrow sign in front of the participant, pointing either right or left at random, indicating the direction the participants should start rotating. And they should rotate until they were facing a stop sign. Here participants stated verbally if they perceived their virtual rotation to be faster or slower than the physical rotation, after which the next trial was initiated. Each virtual rotation was always 90 degrees, and for each trial a rotation gain was applied in the range between 0.5 and 1.5 in steps of 0.1. And each gain was repeated twice, resulting in a total of 132 trials. That is 22 for each condition, run in randomized order. For data analysis, we used a similar method as previous works on detection thresholds. And here is an example of the data from one condition plotted into a psychometric function. For each condition, we determine a point of subjective equality, denoted PSE, at which participants could not determine whether their virtual rotation was faster or slower than their physical rotation. The detection thresholds for gains smaller than the PSE were defined as where the participants responded faster in 25% of the trials, denoted DT low, and for gains higher than the PSE defined as points where participants responded faster in 75% of the trials, and this is denoted DT high. To the left are the results from all conditions pooled, represented as psychrometric functions, and to the right the raw results. We hypothesized that adding spatialized audio would decrease users' ability to detect rotation gains, especially in scenarios where visuals provide limited spatial information. And if this was true, the results should have revealed more extreme DT lows and DT highs from the conditions with audio, particularly when involving dense fog. However, this pattern is not present in our current results. Instead, we found similar detection thresholds across all conditions. And perhaps the key to explaining these similar results lies in the error and stop signs. From the participants' self-reports, it seems that these were the center of attention when completing the rotation tasks. They seem to have distracted participants from other elements of the virtual environment, including the fog and audio. Future work should explore this further, for instance, by replacing signs with audio cues. The fact that each trial only took a couple of seconds to complete entails that conditions drastically change every few seconds. At the cost of a more randomized experiment, 
It could be worth considering splitting the trials into blocks of conditions, each participant being exposed only to one block of trials. An example could be two blocks, where one consisted of conditions including audio and the other consisting of conditions with no audio. In conclusion, the results do not prove that spatialized audio affects users' ability to detect rotation gains. However, our results corroborate past works, indicating that vision is likely to dominate audition when exposed to rotation gains. And moreover, even though some virtual self-motion cues appear to be necessary, our findings indicate that rotation gains can be deployed imperceptibly even when visuals are limited. However, spatialized audio could still be considered important for users' experiences, in that spatialized audio may be central to eliciting presence, for example. And auditory redirection remains relevant to scenarios where users are deprived of visual feedback. Finally, worth noting is that a higher fidelity audio engine, eventually using personalized head-related transfer functions, might affect the results. With that said, thank you for your time.